So welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we are uh, going to have a really in-depth tour of the ORC57, and that includes some of the electrical systems. And this may seem you know, a little bit over the top, uh, but trust me, if you want to take a boat to the nether regions of our planet, you're going to need to understand how, how to repair or how these things operate so you can look after yourself. I think what you'll notice is um, this is quite cutting edge stuff. And um, I, I think uh, traditionally, I think a lot of boats are built, you know, to sell to somebody in a marina. But, you know, this, this, this boat is not. This is very much uh, an offshore boat. But anyway, you make up your own mind as always. And uh, I hope you enjoy this episode. It's the last of three episodes on this particular boat. I don't think you can microwave here, but the oven is very big. Maybe. I can see myself doing a lot of cakes here. And you have a lot of storage to save your things here. And, and yeah, it's not salt water in this, or it is. Sorry? I mean, salt water. There's a salt water um, in that silver tap there. I think there's a salt water this one. tap. Yeah, I think so. That's fresh water, and then there's a salt water tap as well. Okay. But I think the shipyard will do whatever you want, really. And uh, yeah, you've got the, the induction hobs. So in general, I think what's interesting is that the, this layout, and I think the shipyard can do it whatever way you want, whereas this the sink is, is forward, but you can do the sink where Eva's standing, and you can yeah. kind of make, arrange things wherever you want. You know, including the nav station. You can have, uh, you know, the, as many. You know, you could move that table or just not have it at all. I think the obvious place is everybody has a pilot berth and a boat, really. And I think as a day bed, that would be an obvious place to put a day bed, um, just in that position over there. And you know, you can put more, you know, kitchen utensils. So you can bring along whatever you want really and there's there'll be you can put power to maybe a coffee machine or something over there and have that as a prep area so it's pretty good you can see that we've got these these big doors closed at the moment because of course when we're filming there's a bit of uh, um, dredging going on in the in the marina but yeah it's it's a, it's a nice space isn't it yeah it is and we have these lights i don't know if i can turn then on. Yeah, try the digital switching. This here. Try the... Yeah. Just press them all. Yeah, let's try them all. You, there's the normal switches on the wall as well. So they're all connected with, um, wirelessly with these digital switches. Um, and I've seen those in, in, in real estate. But I, I, like, I like the setup. It's, it's nice that digital switching gives you the opportunity also just to, you know, switch them all off in one go. But the immediate space of feeling an airiness. Obviously, it's a, it's a catamaran, right? So you get the, the, the pleasure of all the light. I think what we've noticed, you know, when you're in port, it would be quite nice to have curtains here. And this is basically, at the moment, it, it, it looks, there you go, you've got the lights going. But it looks, at the moment, um, you know, it's quite Spartan, I think, at first. But you can, you can change that. Obviously, it's coming from the race boat heritage. So... The point is you can, you know, you can add curtains and soften it up. And in particular, you know, it's very durable. So if you look at the floor, this is the, um, you know, the non-slip flooring. And that's basically painted on, on top of the gel coat. So I think that's, that's a pretty good system. It's very durable. And that's the thing, I think a lot of people make that mistake. They're looking for a house uh, on the water, which isn't very practical and you're going to maintain it more. So this is all very robust, wipeable. And, um, you know, you can add, I'm sure you could add rugs and stuff if you felt like it, but keeping it, you know, keeping it light as possible is what the, the, the mission is all about here. But that, that screams out to me. I think almost every, every um, place is going to have a pilot berth. So you would, you would have, you know, the long, long sofa here and a watch and, and the other chairs, side as well. look. Yeah. They add these chairs and you can save oh, that's all handy. inside. That's super useful. I think you'd probably put a, some sort of suckers or something to keep them, make them stick to the floor a bit better. Yeah, so it doesn't move. Yeah, and the nav station forward facing. I think it's it's pretty cool, isn't it? It's just your standard. And I know that 
I think the shipyard can move that nav station so around e either which way, so have your legs in on the right rather than at the left as it is at the moment. You know, you can, it's a, cus it's a semi custom yard, right? So you can pretty much move anything around. And these boxes, are, these storage boxes are a good idea. And the fiddles on the counters, you can even have those black, carbon, whatever, whatever you want. I think the other thing would be a no brainer is putting cassettes with um, blinds in the windows. And you can see at the moment we've got the, the, the either switched on the, the, the night lights. You can put that dimmable as well. So you have, um, you know, you're walking around and you're not destroying your night vision on watch. Pretty cool. So let's, let's take you down into the hulls and show you some of the things. And uh, obviously, as promised, we're going to go in quite, quite in depth as always. We go quite technical. And I'm going to look at this at the eyes as if, as if <laughs> I owned one of these, which would be wonderful. But yeah, let's have a look. This would strike me if I put a cushion on this. It's an obvious place to put a day bed as well. And I can imagine uh, a black German Shepherd sitting up here too. She'd enjoy looking up and, and barking at everybody as they go past. Pretty nice. I'm six foot and I think, you know, the, the managing director of the shipyard, he's a really tall guy. And, he, you know, one of his goals is that you can walk without ducking and it's worked. And particularly at sea, you know, that I'm not going to bang my head. Look, I didn't have to duck when I came, came up these stairs. And again, you'll remember from carry on, what I quite like is I don't like these too wide. This is quite, this is perfect. You know, it's, it's um, round corners um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a seaworthy boat. It's not, a, it's not an apartment in, you know, in the middle of the ocean, which makes absolutely no sense in my view. This is a great system. So, yeah, perfect. Good job. And this is... I think you'll agree, this is insane. So you have, as an owner operator, you have your own separate office area. And I could see, you know, either laptop and all your papers, or you could set up a, a monitor screen here. And that it's pretty cool that you, you know, you can sit in your chair and you can obviously just change the chair if you want a normal office chair, uh, looking out the window and relaxing uh, while you're on a, on a business call or whatever. I quite like this, but so let's remove this. This hull is is the owner's hull, and um, on the other hull, on the on the starboard side, you've got two cabins. What's quite nice is that the the both both the beds and in the stern are very large. So let me show you. So again, walking through, I'm not ducking like that. I'm not walking through, no ducking, and. You know, when, you, when you're immediately looking around, I'm looking for what I can hit, but there's nothing really to fall into. But the most, most obvious bit of luxury here is the fact that this bed is huge, massive berth. And, uh, you know, if bedroom Olympics is your thing, there's a lot of uh, headroom above the bed. So, again, I've said that in my previous videos, not really, um, you know, a problem here with space. I think it's very nice. There's a light and airy. And again, the shipyard has chosen just to do these very basic curtains, but you could probably, you know, tell them to do whatever system you want. You can buy cassettes and, you know, cover the windows whatever way you want. But these, these do the job and um, they're not going to break when you're in the middle of, you know, um, the Pacific somewhere. So that's a pretty robust way of working. Again, you can, if, if you want, you can put fly screens over the windows. You know, the, there's a cassette that you can buy that's fly screens or a cover. I actually, I think that's not a bad idea because that's another thing to break. So you can just do Velcro around the, the rim of the hatch. Pretty good. Uh, I, I, I think I mentioned it earlier on, which is that if you're going to work, if you're working outside and sitting outside, the feet on the deck and the winches are over there. So, you know, if somebody's doing maneuvers and is on watch and somebody's trying to sleep here, you're not going to be irritated, and if you want to be super courteous, you can also navigate from the other helm. So that's one thing on a boat. People walking on the deck above you can keep you awake, and so it's quite nice. I think good setup. And you've got, if I look down, you've got um, two drawers here, but you could probably just do one drawer for you know shoes or whatever. Um, but I, I, I personally don't think there's a problem with storage space here because you've got the choice to do whatever you want. You can you can have open storage for your clothes. Or you can just leave your bag. Uh, you know, if you're if you're going to come for a weekend or whatever, you can leave your suitcase down and live out of your suitcase. I think it's a pretty good system. They've done this textile thing just to hold the clothes in. And remember, folks, on a boat, you know, you can get you can get the damp 
um, inside uh, in some of the spaces. So it's quite nice to have you know cupboards and everything quite breathable if you're going to leave clothes uh, and, and towels for, for long periods. The other thing is that it's pretty cool that the shipyard has let me do this, but I want to have a look what's under the floorboards. And these floorboards are carbon fiber. And that fuel tank, again, in keeping with this fact that these guys are sailors, they've already got it ready to set up if I should want to add something like a diesel heater or, or something like that. Really, really like that. You can see the way they've run, um, you know, they've got the setup of, of the ducting. So if you need to access or feed something new, I can't really see that being a massive problem, really. Uh, I like that. And um, I think I think what you could do is, as time goes along, you could probably get used to whatever it is on the floor that you want. You could probably do carbon, you could do a wood mock-up, and um, you can put uh, foaming on the backing so when you walk it's a little bit softer it's like a spring and and those little, little touches are quite nice uh, when you're at sea just to soften up walking down uh, a corridor it's offshore sailing can be quite heavy on your knees so it's quite nice to have just a little bit of a soft walk as you go along through the boat pretty nice here there's there's controls for uh, aircon and so this boat has a 16,000 BTU aircon monoblock unit and what you are likely to do is close off this section, so the office and the master cabin in, in, in the severe heat, and you have this space uh, air conditioned. Mostly, you could probably almost certainly run a 16,000 BTU uh, water um, kind of cooled compressor monoblock system off all the solar that you could put here. So let's remember you get solar powered air conditioning. When it's hotter, the air conditioning gets more power and that's perfect. And if, if, you, if you use up too much of the energy, you can always switch on the generator on this boat. It does have a generator, which I was really surprised at. Usually these super high performance boats, they don't, they don't have the generators, but you can actually have a small generator on this boat. Pretty cool. The other thing is if you don't want to run the air con, there's two hatches here in just this section, massive hatches above the bed and in the bathroom here as well. But I'm gonna be a little bit naughty. <laughs> I'm gonna explore in depth under the floorboards and see, see what's around. I see that there's an, a, a monoblock aircon, which is here. And um, if I take this floorboard off, and have a little look and see what's beneath. It's, it could be considered a little bit rude, if I'm honest, to go to, go to this level of detail, but why not? They're gonna let, they're gonna let me have a look. So, this is, you've got your seacock management here, and uh, this is the control unit for the, the, the air con, and there's a whole air con system in there. So I think what would be nice is if, if we got one of the technical guys to come and, and, and show us a little bit about, about this system and why they've installed it this way and what they've done. Let's have a look at that. So I'm also being a little bit naughty here, but I'm gonna have to take this panel, working panel off. I've taken the screws off. I'm gonna look behind and I see all these electronics. Again, it's a little bit rude of me to be dismantling somebody's boat, but I think it'd be a good idea to get the engineer to come round and the guy that's installed this and have a look and have a talk about three, one of those systems, but that's an MG battery and, and we know there's a charge controller for it at the, at the nav station. And I'm curious to understand a, a little bit more about some of these systems, but we'll continue on and there's again loads of storage here I don't really think the storage is a problem at all really good yeah nice walking on and through to the bathroom and what strikes me immediately is that you know we've got um, two two separate sinks and that's super luxury massive hatch to let loads of air in and nice setup here could probably install a washer dryer here if you wanted or somewhere else on the boat and in this boat, they've got electric heads in for this side. The yeah, window is good, sure. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Nice, isn't it? You can look out and see the well passing you by. And then there's the stack. You know, this is a very big shower. Like, look at my, I've got my arms fully outstretched and just about touching either side. Um, so, yeah, th this is, the space here is really not a problem. They've got these quite cool buttons to activate the... The, the pump, the shower pumps. These are quite nice buttons. They're quite durable, those. I like those. Do you think that is for seed? 
This, yeah, you can sit here. Yeah, there's no problem. Two people can sit in the shower. Um, you can sit here underway. It's quite a smart idea, and you can watch the world pass you by so that you're, you're not banging around. I haven't seen that in many, in many kind of, let's say, performance boats, that you could sit in the shower, um, and there's a escape hatch, but that can also be used as ventilation as well. And the shipyard tells me that even if you don't like their, their, their you know, the bathroom fittings, they, they can change it to whatever you want. And this is the beauty that, you know, you can access, access things if they go wrong and it's, it's relatively simple access to plumbing and just change stuff out so that suits you. And as, as we go along, you know, like from, from carry on, I've noticed like some of the plumbing fittings, it's quite nice just to be able to walk into a, a DIY store in, in anywhere in Latin America where we are at the moment. Just go and buy that little piece and, and refit it. It's not that much of a mission once you get all the panels off. But this is super easy to maintain. And I think, in my view, that's, that, that's a luxury in, in an owner-operator boat. You're going to spend your time sailing fast on this boat and enjoying it, but not spending all your life maintaining systems and fixing things. Pretty cool. I know this is kind of a weird topic, but marine toilets can sometimes be an issue. I'm surprised, you know, they've got the, they've got a Dometic one here mixed with the, uh, I think it's Jabsco. Yeah, it is Jabsco. Jabsco equipment you can find anywhere. I think it's quite smart, so you can replace that quite easily. And the macerator on these on these Jabsco uh, toilets are um, pretty pretty strong. And it's quite quite a strong macerator. That means you're not really going to have any issues. I, I, I believe there's a holding tank and you've got, an, well, I know because there's an indicator here showing you the tank status. So, you know, you can close the tanks and, um, and, and then release them when, you, when you're, you know, adequately offshore or get them, you know, seen to. But I think the holding tank is somewhere by, by the dagger board. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, it seems like a pretty sensible and robust setup from what I can see. And that's, so this is, you've got one of the MG batteries, that's right, Yeah, Gary. What, this is one of these, yeah. Okay, um, and then this is, what's the name for this This block, block nine? This block called. nine, yeah. yeah. And, and so the block nine, um, you know, the obvious question is about if you have a problem. Tell me a little bit about the block nine. I can see you have one section for uh, maybe a bilge pump here. And yeah, tell me a little so bit about you, the block nine. You have six uh, output on each block. Okay. And uh, you can manage them from uh, the Schreber system over there on the uh, chart so, table. So like a digital switching, it's, basically. Exactly. Okay. And if you have some issue, you can come directly here and uh, command the pump or whatever from here, from this position. And you do that by taking uh, a fuse? A fuse, it? yeah. And you, you just put a it... Fuse, yeah. And so you have a, a label of what, of what it's controlling what here it's with controlling, a red light. Yeah, yeah. And then you just take that off and you put a fuse in and immediately it activates and it closes exactly, the circuit. Yeah. And that, that's it? That's it. Okay, that's super simple. Yeah. And it, I presume if you have a problem with one of these, you can just take it off easily and then reconnect everything behind. With, with a new one, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we just need to play a bit with... Uh, the system over there to tell it that to you're going to that, renew install the new, a new one. one okay and uh, because it's the same network yeah but uh yeah it's not a big uh, big issue okay and i see if, if you come in here i can have a look at this so these these panels with the lights here these these are the block nines that terry was just talking about um and these these orange cables those look like this canvas cables. yeah this is a bus yeah from the shaver system okay so yeah. that so the the so shaver can, system yeah um well, i'll get the name later but that basically tells these block nines what wow. what to do is that correct what to do yeah what to do and uh, all the connection not the power but the connection so okay. what to do from uh, from the navicolor system which is on the Shark table, yeah. Okay, so yeah. for the digital display, yeah. it basically controls that. Yeah. Now, one of the questions I have, Thierry, is 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 are my bilge pumps? Would if if the owner of this boat had bilge pumps um, and there was water somewhere, and say my system, this block nine failed or digital switching failed, would the bilge pump still work on its own? You have the float system, probably. Yeah, but uh, if it's it's uh, block nine fail completely. It will not work. Okay, so you have to have some sort of manual backup. Yeah, or, or, or the, the. That's if the power for all of the block nine is gone. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but under normal circumstances, you could um, ostensibly, uh, you know, if there was a problem with the display was broken or if, one particular block was broken, the automatic float switch would yeah. that still work? Yeah. 
Okay, so that'll still work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that, see, that's that's pretty pretty interesting. But what what your point is, it won't work at all if there's no power to the pump. If there's no power, well, of course. Well. So that's yeah. like every other bilge yeah, pump. Exactly. So yeah. so it really, in essence, as I see it, there's no difference. I've not been a big fan in the past of digital mm. switching, mm -hmm. but from what I can see on this, it seems quite sensible. You get the best of both worlds. Exactly. You have the we have the digital. If you if you want to play with digital. Yeah. And if something happens, you still have the manual push button. Sure. So you have the both system if you want in okay. once. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, for example, on my carry-on, we have a physical DC panel that you just switch them mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. The equivalent of doing that is you have a diagram and a name here. Yeah. And then you just take your normal little fuse and plug it in where that name and diagram exactly. is and boom, it works. And then you are back at the, in the old system. In the old ways. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. That's cool. Yeah. But if you, if you have no current, for sure. Sure. If you have zero power in the boat, then, then you, know, you have an issue. Yeah. What's very interesting, I have to say, I presume it's for weight, but you also have one of the batteries here. And the battery is, this is a 24 volt battery, is that correct? It's a 24 volts battery, yes. Okay, Terry. Yeah. And, and so what's, I think that's quite useful actually, because if you have a total loss of power, um, you know, you, you're usually gonna start checking your battery terminals first. Mm -hmm. So your, your route to removing the problem it's quite logical because you can do it all from here. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's true. And I presume you could just put, you know, if you want, you, rather than having screws here, you could probably have a latch or something to make it quick to, to access. To open it quick yeah. Yeah, yeah, fascinating. That's yeah. really cool. And so tell me, what's the, the this grey box at the top? That's a block ECL. It's marked block ECL or the multi-block. Is that for the lights? The one at the top, yeah, it's yeah. for the light, yeah. It's managing the light, yeah. Yeah, it's so it's just right at the, the the middle in the middle of the screen there at the top. Mm -hmm. So what's quite quite interesting, and I've seen this a lot of uh, real estate projects. Um, if I could just bring Eva back um, to one of the light switches, what you'll notice is that these these light switches here, the the actual pads themselves, they you know you switch them on and off like you normally do on a house, but the battery operated over RF um, you know radio frequency. You don't have to run the cabling, and that's another point that can fail. You know, if one fails, um, then you essentially you you can change the battery or just replace it. So, I think that's quite interesting, um, and I think I've not seen that in boats. And I thought, you know, if I was building a boat, that would be quite an interesting thing to do. It saves you running all the cables, and I'm sure the one the one thing I would ask you, Terry, is is if one of those fails um, and you need to get a new one. Yeah. Uh, how do you go about telling the system that that's a new? You, you, you have to go to the main system, which is on the navigation. On the navigation so what, on, the, on the liquid crystal display, yeah, yeah. and you just tell and, it. And then you tell it that you will change. Physically, that one is linked to one output. Okay. From that uh, that box we just uh, speak about. Okay. Okay. Super. So that yeah. it seems pretty easy. It's, yeah. You know, it's it's for even an idiot like me. I think you might even be able <laughs> to do it under anchor with that much real estate for solar panels on the coach roof what you're probably going to want to do is something like this. Thierry's going to show me here is if I pull these up, look at the access I have, but look how light that is. That's, that weighs nothing. So we're just going to take one of these off and I'm going to stand on the other side. And if you ever can show it's down here, we've got really quick access to one of the seacocks. And what I'm particularly happy with when I look in here is the plastic seacock. Now, you know, I can tell straight away that who, who's made that choice of seacock um, is a sailor. And why? Because if in the worst scenario you were hit by lightning, if there was metal, it's possible that the metal can heat up and make a hole in the boat. So when it's plastic, it doesn't conduct electricity. All right. The second thing is when we look at this, what they've done in comparison. So if I took this whole section off, you can see what we have behind here is is very similar we've got one compressor and this is typical of a monoblock system and we've got our cooling loop and one compressor so it takes the seawater in and it sends it around the loop and fires it off out the boat and so what's really cool is you have a pump which assists in, in ad providing adequate pressure for the loop um, and then it sends that hot water that the compressor has made hot back out the boat so what's really interesting is that for 16,000 BTU, you should be able to run this system. It's definitely possible that you might be able to cool this office 
and you can close off this space and the bedroom. So the owner operator is gonna be able to work and relax and sleep in the tropics off the batteries. Pretty cool stuff, I think. So I'd love to get my hands and get a sale of this to test it, but I think that's pretty interesting. And um, I noticed that obviously this is the first hull. So Thierry's gonna work through some things. And I think this is one of the, Thierry, is this the first aircon unit that you've installed on a boat? Yeah, he's the first one. On, yeah. on, on the ORC range. The ORC. I'm sure, you, I'm sure yeah. you've installed them in other, in other machines. But um, <clears throat> I think, I think, would you do anything differently if you're going to do it again? Yeah, we will uh, change the position of different stuff. For example, the electronic uh, part, for sure. Okay, so you probably move this, yeah. move this across. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. understand that's logic because I presume there's a condensate pump in here. Could be water there, yeah. yeah. Okay, so there's a con yeah, so there's condensation will happen around here, and there's a little trap. I don't know if Eva can see this. There's a little trap for water here. And um, so the water will condensate, will fall in there, and there'll be an electric pump to take it out. Mm. And so Thierry's saying he'll probably move this up, I think, yeah. a little bit, That's right? Well, yeah, yeah. And then the water can fall out the seacocks mm. um, naturally. So if your condensate pump fails, then the, the, the water will leave uh, immediately um, on its own accord through gravity. And Thierry's saying that he'll probably, you'd probably just move this over here, would you, Thierry? And then it's out of the way of if, if, if there should be a failure of the pump or there's too much condensate or there's a leak, then the water won't fall onto the electrical control unit. So pretty cool, you know, first time. It's, uh, you know, it's not very nice me having to stick a camera in poor, poor Thierry's <laughs> face and uh, critique his work, but it's, it goes to show what I think is really interesting is that uh, Thierry and the shipyard are um, one, willing to let me explore the boat in this level of detail, and two, admitting that you can do something differently and change it. I think that's very unique. And let's remember, that's the difference about this shipyard. They've built and own this boat at the moment, hull number one of their range, without it being sold to a customer. And it's for this reason, it's the right way to do things. See the mistakes before somebody else has to deal with them. And for cash flow reasons, a lot of business, businesses will sell their first hull and, and get the cash in for the boat sale and therefore the customer has to deal with the flaws or the issues uh, when they're somewhere else other than you know around the shipyard. So pretty cool, and thank you Thierry for, for taking the time to show us this stuff. Thierry, I think this, is, this must be the touchscreen display for that system that yeah. we just looked at in exactly, the hull. Yeah. Yeah. And I presume, let's have a look, I'm just gonna have a, if it's okay, can I just have a play with it? And it seems that you have, okay, you've got the, the house batteries, um, let's play that again. Um, I'm not sure what that's probably the engine the, battery. The engine battery is which is off now. It's off at the moment, so yeah. you've disconnected it. We've got all the lighting on the boat through that wireless lighting system. So that's pretty handy, because I presume when you leave the boat, you can just switch off, switch everything. off everything. Yeah. And that, that's pretty nice. It doesn't seem too overly complicated to me. Um, mm -hmm. And then you have that's, that's port and starboard. And these are the water pumps, I presume. Yeah. Is this water this pump? Is, this is for the... For the shower. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's the shower pump. Yeah, shower pump. So it's, it's to get rid of the water yeah. in the shower, okay. And then this is the supply, the water pump supply, yeah. is it? Yeah. Okay. One on both side, one on the Frigo is fridge. Fridge. And then these are the 12 volt, volt sockets. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then this is the cuisine that's... This is uh, the water pump. Okay, in the salt water. Yeah. Salt water, water pump. Salt water pump, yeah. And then electronic is the, these guys here, is these it? These guys, yes. Okay. And then you just, it goes on. So you've got your VHF. V VHF. Autopilot, the, radar. Autopilot, yeah. And then auxiliary, what's this? Oh, that's in the skipper cabin. You have a, it's pretty, it's pretty clear. Obviously it's in French, but you can just quickly yeah, change can, that a bit can to change, in, we can into English. Yeah, whatever you want, yeah. So that, that's pretty cool. And then th this is outside lighting. This is a light for outside. And then we have. Uh, this is a pump. So these are the bilge pumps, yeah, exactly. right? So the yeah. bilge pumps are here, yeah. and are all the, the you have bilge pumps for that hull are in that cabinet, yeah. And I presume there's a cabinet on, on this starboard. side yeah. for yeah. okay, yeah. super. So all in all, pretty simple. You could work your way around it if you have a problem pretty quickly. Um, and as far as installing it, you know, it, is it easier to install? Would you say than your traditional old-fashioned system? It's easier to install because I think you have less cable in the same place. Okay. And you have, you have different uh, position right. for the for this box and uh, right. Yeah. That's so, interesting. So yeah. from an installer's perspective, it kind of it help from from if you reverse it the other way. Say I'm offshore and have mm -hmm. a problem. 
in that hull, you know the cabling is going to be there. Exactly. Right. For that form, yeah. Exactly. Which so is on starboard is on starboard. It makes it pretty easy. Yeah. And because you don't have cabling for the lights and the button and remotes, it makes the cabling even less. Exactly. So it strikes yeah. me, you know, uh, as a as a pretty pretty good system so yeah. far. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's Schaefer that managed that, is it? Is yeah, that yeah. how you pronounce yeah, yeah. it? Yeah. Schaefer. It's Schaefer. A, is it a German company? It's it's, it's a, Schaefer. 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 Oh, Schaefer. 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 Yeah. Sorry, it's the my yeah. my understanding of the French <laughs> French accent. Schaefer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. And um, and I noticed that up here, while we're here, if you don't mind, Thierry, we've got you've chosen the Whisper um, inverter, inverter, the Whisper systems. Yeah. Yeah. Is it possible to start the generator from from this location? No, it's from here on the generator. Okay, the generator is from down here. Yeah. And if I was connected to shore power, um, can I start the generator anyway, even when I'm connected to shore power? Yes, you can. Okay, no problem. Here on that board, you can. Okay, but. Um, it will. Uh, it will. Uh, the, the power will go to the to the cabinet. Yes. From from the shore or from. It will not take both. Uh, both oh, sure. It won't take both, yeah, but yeah. It, it'll select one or the other. Yeah, exactly. Is there a way that I can manually select, or does it do it automatically? On that boat is automatic. So on this boat it's automatic. Yeah, yeah, okay, and yeah. I presume it chooses a generator first. He, when we're on the key side, is uh, is a key side. First. So you're better off to physically take the cable yeah. out than yeah, start exactly. the generator. When the cable is not there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, that's yeah, fine. Yeah. The reason I ask, um, Thierry, because I think in some places that you've you've sailed yourself. Yeah. Uh, some countries, perhaps like Panama, we can have problems with the power, right? From the shore, yeah. And um, it's nice to have the choice, right? Yeah, exactly. You, know, you yourself yeah. are a sailor, yeah. and yeah. you know that it's nice to have the choice. But you have the choice if you if you don't plug the cable on the key side, then sure, you, that's you, pretty you, obvious. Yeah, it's yeah. not connected. <laughs> you also by by not plugging the cable in, you don't risk yourself the problem with um, ground absorption of. Yeah you know, lightning strikes and affecting other boats. Exactly. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. I noticed also earlier on, I must commend you for it, Thierry, that you, you've put breakers for the DC solar panels. Yes. I've never seen that before. And that's clearly, you've you've done that from experience in yeah. your own yeah, boats, yeah, yeah. I we presume. Have, uh, some DC before and after the converter, yeah. Well, I'm sure the future owner of this boat will thank you for that because having <laughs> having having not to wait for another um, you know charge controller or something like that, I'm sure the future owner will be very grateful. Yeah. So we've got the Whisper power system here, and then we've got this is this looks familiar to me. This looks like an MG, MG battery controller. Exactly, it's a battery controller. So you, you presumably you can see that she's at 99%, yeah. and of course lithium batteries don't like to be 100% all no. the time. And, uh, but you can drop quite a lot, so it's a good. Uh, it's, yeah. right. You can go to ten percent and it's still. Uh, it's still in good shape. Okay, yeah. so better than gel batteries. So that means yeah. whenever you get a rating on a battery of say six hundred and sixty amp hours, you'll get at least six hundred usable amp hours. Uh, gel batteries, you can only discharge them to you know roughly a little bit more than half actually. So you only get less than half of the original charge. Exactly. So and also I think lithium is a lot quicker to charge. So. If your budget can cater for it, there's an absolute no-brainer. You know, go for the lithium if you can. What I've noticed as looking around this boat is that you know even the thought about weight um, management is considered so much um, that the batteries are held equally uh, amongst the hulls. So you know, it shows the level of detail that Thierry and the design team in Marcel and Composites and ORC Catamarans have taken. So let's let's go back here. So we've got the MG batteries. You've got the the Whisper Power system. We've got a digital switching. Mm -hmm. This is to switch on all power in boat, is it? This is to switch on all the power on board except the beach pump. Okay, except the on the board. solar panel. Okay, and the charge from the key side. Okay, and all the charge from outside, if you want. Okay, yeah. so internal internal to the fridge, the shower, the, the okay, water. yeah, okay, the light. so yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, and and I think. Um, this is the NKE system, and this is a low energy consumption system, but yeah. it does it fits the purpose very well. Now, we know I've talked about this in previous videos. We know the NKE, NKE system is is used prolifically around um, the race boats and you know the Imoco 60s that mm. we're actually sitting next to at the moment. But you yourself, Thierry, you you you've had one. You mentioned to me that yeah. you had one for 12 years and you still had no problems. No problems. No. So it's there you go. Good. Yeah, yeah. I wish I had made that choice before <laughs> myself. And uh, so you've also got you've got engine kill and start here, yeah. I presume. Yes, yeah? exactly. So you've got the engine start and kill. Yeah. I presume this is your water maker. Water maker. Quite nice. And where is the water maker located? Oh, on that boat is on the front. On the, oh, sorry, on the 
on the starboard side. On the starboard yeah, side. Yeah. You've also got the the VHF and all the those VHF things and, and the your hi normal hi-fi yeah. system. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, super. And is this induction hob? It's induction hob as well. This Theory? one, this one is uh, electrical. It's not induction yet. So it's even we, more we, power. We, we, yeah, we will swap on the induction okay. in the future. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's no problem. You, there is no reason why you couldn't do induction. No, no, it's no problem. You yeah. can, uh, yeah. Okay, super. Yeah, and then I presume on the future models you could do things like you know a combination oven, grill, microwave, yeah. that sort of stuff. Exactly, yeah. The way lithium power is going at the moment, yeah. you know, there's no reason why you couldn't do it. Yeah. So, Thierry, that's extremely helpful, and I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. You're no doubt busy day, and it's getting towards the end of the day. So, I really appreciate you uh, taking the okay. time to come and come and show us some of the systems. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, Thierry. Again, it's nearly identical on, on the starboard side. This bed is huge. So for your guests at VIP, this is the, going to be the, the best place to put your friends. It's also most aft on the boat. Again, my view is that when you have friends come to stay, they'll, they'll open up the suitcase and put it here and you know, place their stuff around. Uh, there is storage here and stuff like that, but I prefer, I prefer that actually. I, I don't think you know, it's quite a mission. It's just my way, but you know, to take all your clothes out and put them in the drawers. But if you want to do that, they can install drawers there. I'm sure they can. And uh, just behind Eva on the camera, if we're walking backwards, there's space all along the the corridor here. We'll have a look. So Eva's sitting on that massive bed now, and you know, like I said, it's it's ridiculously cavernous here. I think, again, storage space is not an issue on this boat. This would be an, probably my preference if I was going to install a washer dryer here. This would be the place to put it. But it depends on what kind of sailor you are. Do you want to install a washer dryer at all and just keep this boat super, super light? And again, more storage space. Storage is not a problem. What they've done with the, uh, the, the bathroom, I think it's quite smart. So they've decided to put the head or the toilet here with a sink and then divide it up so that you, then you have a separate shower. And that means if you have people that want to you know, use the bathroom, it, you, know, you don't completely lock out someone from having a shower and using the toilet at the same time. Kind of smart, sliding doors. Yeah. Job done. Going to be going pretty fast in this boat and so it's quite nice that you, you know if you want to take a shower and you, you know you can keep yourself you can have your shower at, at high speed it's pretty insane but also there's a little seat a little bench seat here that you could you know wash yourself offshore and and enjoy a hot shower and still you know have the civilized aspect of being on on you know on the land pretty cool obviously in almost all showers you have a you know a bit of ventilation and a little hatch here for, for opening up you know letting uh, Letting some fresh air in and you know dehumidifying you know dehumidifying this region just to to let the you know the hot steam out. Uh, the standing steam and hot water can you know create obviously calcium, but fungus on a boat you know you don't want that mildewy smell. So all, all well thought out in my opinion. I switched on the lights, so I hope they aren't interfering with the the flickering. So apologies if they are. But this is the daggerboard casing. Look, that's it. That's the daggerboard. And you've got, um, you know, this is a waterproof door, a watertight door there. So you can access if you have problems or something's stuck or you drop something or lines get stuck down the side. Pretty nice to be able to maintain that. And again, you know, I have to say, I'm not sure that you get this big a bed on, on a lot of the other similarly sized boats. This is a super respectable size. Again, this is, this is I think this is about, what do you say, Eva? This is about the same size as the boat on uh, the bed and, and the master cabin and carry on, no? About the same uh, size? Yeah, yeah, very much. I think same. it's about the same size. Um, so it's definitely a queen berth. And um, yeah, this, this is the forward hull. Uh, so normally on these uh, very high performance cats, you, you just basically have to make a sacrifice in the forward cabins. Doesn't look like there's any sacrifice here to me. The other interesting is, thing is behind that bulkhead, there's a, in this boat, there's a skipper cabin and it's a pretty acceptable skipper cabin. And uh, you can either have that skipper cabin as a workshop or Skipper Kevin, but you decide. And that's the thing, you're getting the benefits of a, let's say, a, a fully custom boat, 
without the expense. You know, you 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 get the the beautiful hulls and all the experience of this very high performance shipyard, but you are given the choice. I think with a lot of other companies, you're not really you're basically told what you're going to get. Pretty nice seeing seeing the space, a bit naughty. We got your your feet on the bed, but there's plenty of space. And this is the forward cabin. But it looks like Eva, can you see out the windows from there? You can oh see. yeah, of course. So you can see oh, out both window, windows. And I can see the other side of the boat from here. So when you are sailing, you can see all the waves and and everything from here. Pretty nice. I can stand this one myself even. I think we, it's going to be hard to get us off this boat. You can see behind me and above me, this is the deck of a, an ORC 57. And what you'll see is, look at the quality and the detail of this carbon pieces on that deck structure. So this particular boat is carbon dagger boards and the carbon they sell. So what that means is you've got the, the bridge deck basically and where the mast sits on, the coach roof is also carbon. So I think what's really cool about this shipyard, you can have as much carbon as you want, but what they've done is all the structural important parts and a bit more are carbon. And the bits that are in touch with the borderline are your normal glass. And that gives you the, the, the luxury of not having the slapping, banging, the slamming sound, but you also get it where it's useful and important. And, and so you get a nice price uh, ratio versus comfort ratio. Great, great system. And we're really lucky that we're getting, getting to see this deck superstructure go on top of the, uh, you know, the, 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 the actual hulls themselves. Perfect timing. We just walked in and you know, I'm pretty grateful. We're, it's a bit rude. We're, we're sticking our nose in when these guys are hard at work. So um, yeah, I really appreciate that we're allowed to do this right now. But super interesting to see this deck go on hull number two for the first time.